It's time for trigger warning. Trigger warning! Fuck your feelings, you little snowflake! TriggerWarning.tv Hello and welcome to Trigger Warning. Uh, we're here on LiveLeak.com, the mighty LiveLeak.com, and broadcasting out of the book of face on the media that is social. On tonight's show, we're going to be talking about the fallout from the uh, Vegas shooting, of course. We're going to be talking a bit about the EU and a bit about some rather bizarre new UK laws, and we can also talk about anything you'd like to talk about. All you have to do is get in touch. Um, you can tweet us at Triggered TV or email on live at triggerwarning.tv or Skype in live at triggerwarning.tv. It'd be great if you Skyped in. It'd be lovely to hear from you. I'll be taking care of your tweets. But tonight I'm joined as ever. Have you found it? Yes. Oh, he's found it by Dangerous Graham. <laughs> Hello there, you alright? And Cherry. How do you? You okay? I'm great, mate. How are you? Sound. <laughs> I really need to move that overlay to the other side at some point as well, so it doesn't look quite as strange as looking away from each other yeah. all the time. How are you this week, Graham? You all right, fella? I'm all right. I'm all right. We had to cut uh, the game face show a little bit for, short because I just got through everything. You did. Is that, is, has that ever happened before? Actually? You were like a machine. What? Short? No. Yeah. Never short. It always goes too long. Usually, yeah, it's it? always like, over. Just, just five minutes. Just, five just minutes. another five. Just go on, Aiden. A bit more. Like it's a fucking school morning. <laughs> How have you been this week, Cherry? I've not been bad at all. Um, took lad training, like you do. Uh, went fishing, strangely enough. Uh, went for another nice steak meal. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. But today, uh, I, when your lad becomes so dull, you get passionate over the refund of a fucking cooker. I was protesting outside the shop. Protested. Yeah. Didn't get a fucking refund. Has, have we all taken yeah. a knee for Cherry? I, to be honest, I I saw your live video Did as you? it was ending. <laughs> so right. I just said uh, it was just you just going. All oh, right, I'll see you in a bit. And they, I was like, what's just happened there? They called the fucking police on me as well, dicks. I can't believe it. I'd call the police on you as well. To be <laughs> fair, if I caught you hanging around outside my establishment, I'd have none of it. I was like, no, don't go in there. I'll <laughs> fucking rip you off. <laughs> There we go, consumer advice about Damn. buying cookers in Tameside from our cherry. <laughs> you see, you get value on trigger warning. Don't ever let it be said otherwise. Let's have a look in Troll Central. Wow. HTTR24 says, Graham and Cherry, greetings. Fucking hell. Fat Belly says, don't let Cherry read the emails. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Cherry's reading the email. In fact, someone actually put in a post, amongst many other complaints... That I, I shouldn't go to the clowns in the back. And I thought that was a bit harsh. Because I do have to point out, in a rare moment of sincerity, that this wonderful experience that surprisingly many of you enjoy each week wouldn't happen without these guys. You know? It's, it's the family. So, no. I won't stop going to the clowns in the back. There are clowns. Special clowns. Well, else is going? Just passing by keeps saying fuck Euro cunts. Well done. That's fantastic. Um, cup of tea wants to knee somebody in the balls. That's quite cool. That's nice. Well, it's acceptable. How are we looking on the book of face early doors? Uh, we've had a little bit already, actually. Uh, Ian said, when's it starting? Which is odd, because I can see it playing live right now. Uh, Nick's giving you a good evening. Uh, Christy has said, love you guys. Plural. Uh, coming to you from Canada. And uh, Nick also said, will be there. So I'm assuming he wrote that just before we started. I'm imagining. To reassure us. <laughs> Thank good. you. Uh, you've even had a, a heart as well, bless you. Oh. A Facebook heart. <laughs> Lovely. That's, that's made my evening. That's made my evening. Videotape. Uh, oh, he's telling somebody else to shut the fuck up. You repetitive. <laughs> just passing by. To be fair, you are you are being a little dull. It's not triggering people. We're just repeating the same thing over and over again. It's just being dull. By the way, if you are watching on another platform, where you're watching on LiveLeak and you're not signed in, remember, if you watch on the mighty LiveLeak.com and log in, you get to watch with Troll Central where you can exercise your brain power, your, your cogent reflexes, 
against the creme de la creme of internet viewer. I say creme, like cream, it's just that they float to the top. Um, but my, my people, my spastics, they're in there. Uh, video upload says, can we start at 9 o'clock? You can start whatever time you like, but we start at 10. I don't want to start at 9 o'clock. That'd be, that'd be really difficult. That'd be really fucking difficult. Right, we need to crack on. Remember, guys, all the contact information is there. Do get in touch. be great to hear from you uh, about anything we're going to talk about or anything you'd like to talk about. That would be super. Stop coughing. This is not a Tory party conference. You hold it in. You know, well, we've got something to say, Booth. I've not got a cough button. I just thought that was a nice, nice little link. I thought I was, hey, I was, I was I'm on it. Respect. respect I'm on it. There. Hey, you didn't get none of that. Do you remember that cough I had? Mm. You didn't get none of that nonsense from me, did you? I'm no, not, I had I'm to keep upset. turning the fade down. <laughs> 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 okay, um, if you watched Trigger Warning last week, you might already know that when we talk about a certain country, we have a little intro for that country. Didn't do that for this one this week, because this didn't... As much as triggering people's fun and getting people upset is fun, I didn't think this was a great topic to fuck around with. Because on Sunday night, um, Stephen Paddock, got a picture of him here, a uh, 64-year-old ex-accountant, uh, became the perpetrator of the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States. He killed 59 people outright and injured around 500 more. 59 dead, 500 injured, probably more look like they're going to die when they're, they're currently under critical care. Um, he checked into the Mandalay Bay Hotel, and over the course of a couple of days, he moved uh, multiple high-powered rifles with multiple high-powered, high-capacity magazines up to his hotel suite. He disabled the smoke detectors. He um, set up cameras and got, he got himself ready to perpetrate this uh, horrific crime. He blew the windows out. And uh, then rained bullets down on innocent people at the uh, Harvest Country Music Festival. Um, you all know this. You all know about this. Yeah, stop fucking about over there. This is serious business. Um, but you all know this. There's nothing more I can add about the actual story. It's been covered 24-7 uh, in the news. And there's so much noise out there at the moment uh, about Stephen Paddock that it's hard to discern anything concrete. But among the conspiracies, uh, it is clear from this photo that people were killed at the event. I know that's quite a small picture, but uh, there are just bodies lying everywhere. And of course, Stephen Paddock also took his own life before the police could get to him. Uh, he saw them coming. Now, the conspiracy theories have been coming thick and fast. Naturally, InfoWars were at the forefront of the false flag operation claims. People claiming everyone was a crisis actor. People claiming that uh, nobody died, it's all bullshit, it's all this, it's all that. But you know, 59 people died. And one thing that amazes me is that the fact is, we don't know why this man did it, what the reasons were. And yet the internet is full of really bright people that have it all figured out. I've seen some amazing multiple shooter theories that the eyewitness himself, the one that everyone bases this claim on, says didn't happen. But that means they got to him. It's going crazy with these conspiracy theories. It's going absolutely insane. I've even seen one, naturally, saying it was a Mossad operation to take guns off Americans. Because I'm sure that's what Mossad do. Shoot people in Las Vegas to get guns taken off Americans. Um, now, of course, inevitably, this has turned to gun control. We will come back to some of the conspiracy theorists and my thoughts on them fairly soon. But inevitably, this has turned into a gun control issue. With some people saying Americans should have all their guns taken off them, which I don't understand. But there are a couple of things I, I did. I, I asked on Twitter last night, which Happy Dog completely failed to fucking understand the, the, the reason for this question. And he he's also not American. But if things like bumper stocks, bump stocks, that's it, a bump stock, and suppressors were made illegal, and there were the, the background checks put back in for mental illness and things like that, 
would that really infringe on your Second Amendment rights? Now, I'm not, I'm not turning this into some kind of Euro-liberal, you shouldn't have guns thing, because you have a right to have guns. And as far as I'm concerned, for whatever my opinion's worth, the only reason you need to have a gun is that you want a gun. That's it. If you want a gun, and you're allowed to have a gun, have a gun. Have 10 guns. Have 40 guns. I don't think that it's anyone else's business how many guns you have. And if you think a reasonable price... To, if you think, by the way, banning things like bump stocks and suppressors and having more stringent background checks, if you think they're unreasonable, do you think this is just the price you pay for this? Is this a reasonable cost? Now, I know some of the statistics have been skewed in favour of the gun control argument. 300 mass shootings in America last year. The way they quantify mass shootings is a little disingenuous. But, you know, if, if you just looked at it as one person taking out a lot of people, there were at least four, which is a lot. And if you want to be really brutal and mathematic about it, the amount of people that die in mass shootings is only a tiny percentage of the, the homicide fatalities every year in the US. So is taking action on these things statistically just another opportunity to be dramatic? Because for me, 59 fucking people died because a lunatic, for whatever reason, rained bullets down on these people using a bump stock so that you could have something akin to fully automatic weaponry and high capacity magazines allowing him to throw out what was it up to a thousand rounds he threw out of the hotel let me know about the background checks and things and also let me know why you'd need semi-automatic or a semi-automatic with a bump stock why do you need one of those? Is it just that, well, I want, therefore I should have? And how does that quantify with your Second Amendment rights? Because I was under the impression it was about being able to stand up to a tyrannical government, a well-armed militia and all those things. I thought that was the goal. But most people I speak to who own guns, that's not the first reason they have them, because they probably realise that governments have Blackwater and drones and far better weaponry than you can afford. Well, most people say home defence, hunting. Is an AR-15, for example, or an AK-47 with a bump stock really a very good home defence weapon? You're there, you're with your family. The thing you've been waiting years for happens as an intruder in your home. Well, bang one of them... Is it 60 capacity magazines you can get? Bang one of them in and just fucking let rip. I'm sure the drywall will stop them just going through your kids and stuff. I always was led to believe by a friend of mine who is a gun dealer, a legal one, not like an illegal dealer, that the best home defense weapon is a shotgun. Um, less penetration through, uh, you know, walls and things like that, but a nice spread and incredibly loud noise disorients the intruder and all that, and you're more likely to hit them. I was only was under the impression that would be the best defense weapon. Then you might want a long rifle for hunting, if that's what you do. Um, um, maybe handguns, just because you like them. But an AR-15 with a bump stock? Why do you need one of those? Why do you need a suppressor? Is there, a sec is there something in the Second Amendment which validates owning these things and I'm asking this before people get all fucking pissy and butt hurt which people invariably do I'm asking because I'm not a part of that culture so instead of someone foreign sitting here saying you should have everything taken off you which must be incredibly fucking condescending let's be fair let alone when your own people do it tell me educate me the necessity the, why you would have these weapons um, do you perhaps believe that taking things like that away is a long, slippery slope towards having everything removed from you. Because there is an aspect with the amount of homicides you have there, firearm homicides, and the amount of mass shootings. It's like if my son's bad, like when he woke my wife up one morning by shooting her in the face with a Nerf gun. 
I took the Nerf gun off him because he was being naughty. Is it that you just need your guns taken off you for a timeout? I know. Or perhaps, you know, that th there is a sensible solution. How do you stop this? People have told me it's a mental health issue. I get that. Very poor mental health resources. Okay, but shouldn't you make it harder for them to get hold of legally obtained firearms? Um, I don't know. Tell me. Educate me. If you get butt hurt, I will virtually take your firearm away from you. I know, you cold, dead fucking hands and all that bullshit. Do you believe that owning firearms protects you from a tyrannical government? And if it does, how did you end up with a tyrannical government? Let me know. I, I am genuinely fascinated because I've been to America. I've fired guns. I understand how exciting it is. And it's fun. I fired a fully automatic AR-15. I called it an M16. I was corrected. Because you've got to get your fucking terminology right. Heaven help you if you say clip instead of magazine. Two different things. Shit holds bullets. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking... I'm an English... I had an air pistol. You know? I don't feel the need for a gun in this country. I don't... I don't want to own a gun. I don't feel the need to have one for my protection. But it's a different culture. And when we spoke about this before on Back on the Live League show, I have to explain time and time again that I, I, I can't just overlay my culture on somebody else's. It doesn't work. I don't live in America. I like to think that if I did, I still probably wouldn't want to own a gun. But I couldn't say. Maybe I would. Maybe that's the only way I'd feel safe. So, you know, let us know. I mean, people have said as well, the argument, guns for protection. I actually saw it said, well, if more people at that concert were armed, it could have ended differently. Yes, it could. They could have returned fire at the hotel and killed many more people without even once getting close to the guy that was shooting at them. That's never an answer, that. More, more people. The thing is, man, uh, there, was, there was a direct quote from that. I can't remember the guy. You know, the singer from the band. Yeah. Uh, big gun advocate. And he said that they've got guns in the, you know, in the coach and everything like that. He specifically said none of them could go and get the guns because if they had a done, the police would have shot them. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the, the protection argument, that f falls apart completely with the reality of what's on the in ground. In that situation. Yeah, of course. Uh, also, um, if everyone at that concert was armed, could you imagine, well, a couple of thousand people yeah, it just turning around and returning fire at the fucking Mandalay Bay yeah. Hotel? Now, you're, you've just been down on the tables. You've won a few quid on blackjack. Next thing you know, there's 2,000 fucking people shooting at you. Because some bell end 10 floors up has gone fucking mental yeah, yeah. and you're going to cop a bullet for him. Well, Fuck it's, that. It's like the people that got injured in the stampede, the resulting stampede. You, you just have exactly the same thing. Just, yeah, just, but with just guns. Shooting everywhere and, yeah, yeah. No, I like no. the way you got them down as two guns each. Well, yeah. Can I check you out, fucking mate? Don't do it, then, yeah. Yeehaw! Yeah. Um, the people support the NRA. Hoplophobes think the NRA is evil. I think the NRA's a very powerful lobby group. That's what I think. Europe has a tyrannical government. It's got many buckaroo. Europe's not a country. You know, the thing is, this is what amazes me. If someone criticises Britain, I'll go, eh, fair dues. You criticise someone else's country, they've got to, they think an argument is, well, your country's that as well. I know what Britain is like. You need, this is something people on the internet need to get out of. If someone criticises Trump, they come back with, yeah, but Hillary's emails. If someone criticises Hillary, they go, well, yeah, but Trump's pussy grabbing. Fuck off. That's not addressing a point. Address the actual fucking point. Don't just you think, well, I'll deflect fucking wildly like you're some kind of cut-rate fucking politician. That's bollocks. That's bullshit. That's a bullshit argument. I'll be getting onto Great Britain later, don't you worry, pickle. And I'll be pointing out what's akin to fucking fascism. So relax. We'll give every country shit here. Some more than others. Like one guy got annoyed with me because I was taking the piss out of Bulgaria. Who knew Bulgaria had fans? HTTR24 said that's a silly scenario. Most didn't know where the fire was coming from. I know that was kind of my point that it was a bullshit fucking thing to say. You know, that's the whole point. 
Ban legs because people got hurt by the stampede, it says Happy Dog. He's trying to trigger me because he knows that that kind of point is the one made by inbred fucking dick sucking morons. Ban knives! Knives have other purposes. We've banned Rambo knives and shit in the UK because they don't have another purpose. Most stabbings are carried out with knives from inside the home anyway, but knives have more than one purpose. For example, I could take a knife from my kitchen, go out in the street and start poking it in people. In theory. But I could also use it to apply peanut butter to toast. Undo a plug. Not that anyone does that anymore, they're all fixed, but I miss those days. Many, many things you can do with a knife that you can't do with a gun. For example, your Glock 17 would be shit at putting butter on your toast. And you can't do a plug with it. You can shoot it. One purpose, one purpose only. Also, I don't believe in banning guns. It's not my fucking problem. I'm quite happy with our gun laws here in the UK, although they're about to get more ridiculous. Whatever the gun laws are where you live, if you're happy with them, well, good for you. I'm not going to campaign ever to take shit off people. If it's legal, it's your business. You know, although maybe people should think about it a little bit. HTTR24 says murder is already illegal. Restricting tools is silly and won't stop anything. Yeah, but you know, restricting access to bumper stocks and high capacity magazines might have meant he'd have to get off his fat, lazy, devious fucking murdering ass, go down the stairs with a fucking pistol or a hunting rifle, and take pot shots and probably get killed a lot sooner, which means less than 59 people fucking die. Just a thought. Please don't give me these shit memes as arguments, guys. You're better than that. That's fucking bullshit. Standoff says, don't ban guns, ban Americans. That's probably even harder than banning guns. I'm so glad I live in Europe, says Skull. And not every wacko can get a gun. Fair enough. Um, I don't even know what that means. I think that's foreign. Ian, Eoin, Eoin, I wish you people would spell your names properly. Eoin Kelly says, I stabbed a Big Mac. How posh is he? He takes cutlery to McDonald's, you middle-class twat. Oh. Oh, that's middle-class. And he's Irish. I kind of want to do that now, though. Just to get the... the, the I've eaten a, I've eaten a burger with a knife and fork. I kind of want to do it specifically at McDonald's. I, right mine wasn't McDonald's. It was Spain. And it was, you know, it was a cafe thing. Because mm. obviously I went to an English eating establishment well, whilst in did, yeah. Spain. <laughs> and I, it was that greasy. I had to eat the burger with a knife and fork. Oh, Still better than paella. What the fucking hell is paella? I've never seen such a plate of what appetising, pre-eaten, regurgitated tepid, rubbery shit on a plate in my fucking life. Here's a load of shit we scraped out the bottom of the sea. Eat that. Fuck off, I want a sausage. I want a sausage and a rasher of bacon and some eggs. Or fucking paella. Filthy foreign muck. Although I quite like croissants. Yeah, croissants are good. Go figure. Um... Fayolando says, I find it shocking and alarming that the UK police won't carry guns. Um, they find handgun from you probably getting life sentence lull. Yeah, you, you will get a heavy sentence if caught with a firearm. Many of our police are armed. We have a lot of armed police units. Not every policeman carries. Although, police themselves always said they didn't want to because of the escalation argument. Um, but more and more of them have seem to be coming around to the idea that they'd quite like to have guns. Now, they probably watched all those videos where you can shoot people running away from you uh, and quite fancy some of that action themselves. Also, there's the terrorism angle. And, yeah, more of them seem to be pushing, but they still want it more controlled. They don't want every copper out there with a firearm. That's not what they want. They think that would be counterproductive. Um, so there you go. So Max Dahl says, why not do a Bieber gig? Because, you know, there's still innocent people there. Um, let's have a look. Is this it or is this a recording? <laughs> um, Hayden, what would be the difference between having five high capacity magazines versus 15 small capacity magazines? I'm guessing a little more time between changes to go and get something done. Less bullets to throw down all at once. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, but they do seem to be a problem for some people. Yeah, you know, what's the difference? 
couple of seconds grace to get yourself in cover. Pass. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get shot at. I couldn't say. I've never had a gun pulled on me actually. I've had a knife pulled on me. Never a gun. Um. So I couldn't say. What if he drove a truck through the crowd? Banned trucks. Oh, you fucking spastic. Oh, you fucking dreadful spastic. I'm not even talking to you. You're too fucking stupid. You're too stupid for Troll Central. Banned truck. I can't think. So I'm going to try out the same shit I've heard every other fucking wall-eyed dribbling, gun-polishing spastic say on Twitter. Fucking hell. Ban everything, yeah, that you can kill people with. Fingers. Spoons. Oh, dear me. Uh, let's have a look. Who signs for the job to be unarmed with all the muzzies in your country? Well, you know, the majority of Muslims don't appear to be killing people in our country. I'm sure Paul Joseph Watson's informed you otherwise, but in reality, it doesn't seem to happen. Perhaps our police officers are just really good policemen who realise you don't need to fucking shoot everybody. But then again, a lot less of the criminals are armed here as well. So, horses for courses. There we go. Um, let's have a look here. No Huff has repeated the banned trucks argument just to double down on the fact that his mum and dad are sister and fucking brother. Jesus wept. That's upsetting. Restricting something with no good reason is silly. That's why I'm asking the question. I'm asking the question. Is it to stop so many bullets being thrown down range at once? Is that reasonable? Why do you need that at all in your life? As a question. Why do you need that? It can't be for home defence. It can't be to take on the military because they'll fucking kill you if they wanted to. So what's the reason? If it's just because I can, okay, then this is the price you pay for it. And it's always easy to pay that price though, isn't it? This is the thing. It's easy to pay the collateral damage price when it's not your daughter lying there with a skull split open and her brains drying on the fucking floor. Your mother, your sister, your brother, your dad, your son. When it is, I bet that price is a lot harder to fucking bear, don't you think? But when they're not yours, they can just be statistics. It's like Lively got a load of shit for showing the video of the victims. From people that probably watch dead videos full of dead people all the fucking time. But they weren't dead people from their country. That's a tragedy. Another country is just a statistic. It's like the press in the UK saying it's disgusting people showed such videos. Front pages of our newspapers, we had that drowned little boy. That little uh, Syrian boy. Who drowned and was washed upon the beach. That turned up in the papers a lot. But he was just a dead Syrian boy, so... That's alright. A little tug of the heartstrings, but it's alright. Our own people, though. Don't want to see them dead. Unless it means taking your bump stocks and your high-capacity magazines. Then fuck them, right? Have we got any emails there, Cherry? <laughs> we have. I think you've uh, triggered a couple of people tonight. Jolly good. Um, just, well, some bullshit about guns and why they should have them. And, uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and there's it. Back to you, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a load of bollocks, mate. <laughs> it is though, isn't it? Right. <coughs> Go on. It's like you said, you don't really need a fucking gun like the police over in the UK. They know not to do it. I think everyone's just a bit fucking chuggy happy over there, but that's just my opinion. Uh, we've got an email for Fat Belly as well. Yeah. Ta da! How else would be for? I'm really <laughs> lost now. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really yeah. struggling. I'm not seeing what you're seeing. I'm, <laughs> I don't know I'm relying on. on you to tell me these things. <laughs> Do you want some Facebookings? Don't have a conversation <laughs> with them. Tell me what they say. Sorry. Yeah, 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 let's have some book of face. Uh, so Natalie said, I think your backdrop for this show should be way worse. Hashtag proper trigger. It should, but you know, uh, one step at a time. I did this very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for want of not not wanting to offend. It's just a question of time. Uh, Ron said hi. Uh, Anthony said uh, you could have shot the belt off him, but well done anyway. Don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means. Um, uh, apparently, there's twenty-two thousand people. There's a big thing about it being twenty-two thousand people there. 
Uh, people keep clarifying that for you. Wow, uh, 22,000. Uh, uh, I, I think that leads into the uh, conspiracy theories a little bit. Oh, you've got a call. Do you want to take it? Oh, do you know what? I will. That'll be lovely. Yeah, Thank you. Answer straight away. Yeah. Hello, who's this? Uh, this is Greg Lion's Den. Hello, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, do you know what? Fantastic. What can we do for you this evening? Uh, just calling about uh, your guys talking about gun control. Mm. Oh, hang up. Yeah, do you want to turn your stream volume down a bit? Because the stream comes later. I'm yeah, let me uh, let me go turn that down. It's yeah. on my other computer. No problem. We'll just end up in a weird loop. He's got a smashing beard. Yeah. <laughs> nice pillows as well. I mean, like the pillows. It's a good little throw there. Nice pillows. Nice house. Yeah, yeah. Well done, man. Looks good. That was in my other room. Ah, that's but, okay. Uh, no, I, um, you know, the, I think that a lot of uh, the AR-15s and everything that are they're they're quite unnecessary in the United States. However, um, they really are the only thing to protect against tyrannical government. Mm. But however, I suppose you could point out if you if you were going to argue, and I must because that's the nature of the beast. Um, the amount of people with AR-15s coming up against highly trained opposition with attack helicopters, drones, um, bunker well, busters. Mean, the, United, the United States can barely win in Afghanistan, and all they have is rudimentary weapons. Uh, yeah, I, I think, and uh, no offense to the Americans, I'm, I'm actually very fond of America, by the way. I, I'm not advocating you have anything taken away from you. You're a civilized first world nation. You have all the luxuries that people could want in your nation, much like our nation, but bigger, of course, especially in Texas. I don't think I don't think I could take the American people and put them in Afghanistan and see that kind of resistance anymore, because I think your urban centers are too massive. Uh, you would have pockets of resistance in non-urban areas where the militias are, and that's where the fire would be concentrated. And also, I think if they really wanted to disarm you, if they really did, they wouldn't do it like that anyway. They'd make you turn on your own people, demonize small segments of the population, and have you support them taking things away from them. That's how it would really work. Yeah, I lost you for the last few seconds, but uh, you know, like, like I, said, I mean, the, the the gun nuts, and you're right about the NRA. They are a massive, uh, you know, um, just organization. That in reality, they're just the other side, and they they really come up with a bunch of bullshit articles that really are are uh, untrue about uh, guns. But then you have uh, a lot of uh, legislators in the United States that don't know anything about guns that are creating laws that so that that's why you end up with these bump stocks and different things like that because you know they in, in the state of california we have a uh a, a push button that has to be unlocked you can only drop a magazine out of a ar-15 hmm. with a bullet it's called a bullet button oh and now can, i did see something about that hasn't someone released um well, it's an insert at the bottom of the magazine that acts like a bullet, so you can use your last bullet and it will still drop. Well, yeah, I, I, they're moving towards more of, of a fixed magazine, which actually is probably makes more sense. But they, these legislators put in this bullet button, but you know this bullet button and, and even a fixed magazine. Uh, I can, I mean, I I built my AR, and I was able to. I, I had put a bullet button on it to be California compliant. However. If I wanted to take that bullet button off, it would take me all of 25 seconds mm. and, and put a regular one on. So it, it, it's, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a touchy uh, uh, subject right now in the United States. It, believe me, any time I bring up gun control, people just lose this shit because no one wants to hear an Englishman even asking about gun control. And uh, well, I, say, you, I get the gun thing, though. I, I'm not an expert by any stretch, but I have fired handguns and fully automatic rifles and i get it it's hugely enjoyable i understand yeah uh you know in my in all honesty i think that the guns that should be banned are handguns 
uh, something that you can conceal and walk around with is, I mean, those are the what's killing Americans. It's yep. not the, in, it's the right. In their the thousands. Nationalism. In their thousands. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, the, the, uh, I think that right, uh, automatic rifles or, or AR-15s or 308s, they amount for virtually nothing. Even if you add these 59 to the list, it's still going to be under um, – Probably under I don't know exact numbers, but probably under you know point five percent. Tiny, of the- tiny percentage. I agree. I agree fully. I think it's just it's an easier weapon to demonize because any politician that even hinted right. at the removal of handguns would not be a politician for yeah. a New York minute. They'd be out. They'd be gone. They'd be finished. That's an end of them. Yeah. No. So, so I'm, I'm basically I'm going to make you sound really. I'm going to say you advocate. Get rid of handguns, give everyone fully automatic rifles. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just saying that handguns, I mean, I, I have handguns, but uh, I think that they're far more uh, of a nuisance to society than um, a rifle, which is actually could be used to fight against a tyrannical government, whereas a handgun would uh, absolutely do nothing. No, except make you die looking cool with a nickel-plated handgun, I suppose, if that's well, how you wanted to check out. <laughs> Exactly. Dude, thank you so much for calling in. I do appreciate it. Hey, it's no fantastic. Problem, thank good, you. Good to talk to you, Hayden. Thank you, mate. Take care. Bye-bye. That was a good call from clearly a responsible gun owner. And uh, I'll take these off because you just get the... It sounds like chip tune. Um, just the noises down it, which is very confusing. Um, let's have a look at HTTR24 says if you're in favour of banning any gun available you are against civil rights hmm. UK government have responded to the Vegas shooting by saying they want to ban more no not yet No, I know, I know. <laughs> they want to ban more uh, more weapons in the UK they want to buy two two, uh, ban two two semi-automatic rifles um, 50 calibre rifles and apparently maybe shotguns which makes no sense whatsoever because shotguns are widely used in the country um, I don't understand why the UK government is reacting to uh, an incident abroad, perhaps just because it's a very good opportunity when people want to see things removed. I mean, our, our gun laws are incredibly, incredibly restrictive, but uh, we don't have a lot of mass shootings or gun crime, to be fair. So, who knows? But speaking of the UK, we're going there next, so let's run the video. <laughs> There we go, the UK. A little island separating as we speak from Europe, allegedly. Um, this lady here, she's called Amber Rudd. She's our Home Secretary and uh, Chief I Make the Rules I Does kind of person. And um, she's decided she knows how to tackle terrorism. She's got it now. Because that's her job as Home Secretary. Um... She's already gone to war with WhatsApp, because clearly a key component in the war on terror is going after the very platform predominantly used by kids to share photos and go, hi, what you doing? Not really the terrorist's main app of choice, I wouldn't have thought, but she's going after it. She also hates encryption. She doesn't know why, doesn't understand it, but knows that we shouldn't allow to be keep secrets from our friends in government because they've only got our best interests at heart. And she's proved this by suggesting some new legislation that is currently enraging people online, uh, unsurprisingly. So here we go. She's going hard or going home here. I want to make sure that those who view despicable terrorist content, content online, including, but not limited to, jihadi websites far-right propaganda and bomb-making instructions face the full force of the law, hence us having a picture of a jihadi making a bomb. If I could have got a jihadi with a swastika armband making a bomb, I'd have been even happier. <coughs> the proposed change to the current law under which anyone caught in possession of information likely to be used for a terrorist act uh, could be jailed for 10 years. This this new one closes a loophole because that allowed people to watch this media on a streaming service. Now, it seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? 15 years for watching an ISIS video. 15 years in prison. 
for watching a bomb making video. This is where the internet stopped. My god, they're gonna put us all in prison! Can't go on live like a YouTube or fucking anywhere! Prison! Ah! No! Calm your tits. It's a ridiculous piece of legislation. It won't work. And it's not gonna stop any terrorists. But Daily Mail readers will fucking love it. And that's their core voting block. They'll be very excited. But it ain't gonna work. Because the new offence would apply only to those who repeatedly viewed online terrorist material. To safeguard those who click on a link by mistake, or who could argue that they did so out of curiosity, rather than with criminal intent. You've watched that beheading video ten times? Yeah, it was interesting. Alright, mate. There you go. Law finished. I'm just curious. I mean, not being funny, I've seen a bomb making video. Never made a bomb. Never made a bomb. Seen terrorist videos. Never driven my car into anybody on purpose. I did it at a police van that time, but that wasn't on purpose. And they got very shouty. It's a bullshit law. It's a bullshit fucking idea. I don't know who the fuck is advising Amber Rudd, but they, they need to stop. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever to threaten people with 15 years in prison for watching shit. How is that separate? If they're watching this stuff and then you find other things that prove they're going to commit or plan to commit or wish to commit a terrorist act, surely there's enough in that part of the law to deal with them. This is almost like criminalising people that just like to think about it. Not perhaps the best people, but, you know, people think about all kinds of heinous and weird shit without actually doing it. And like I say, it's not just terrorist video. Far-right videos. I don't know what that means. Does that mean if you watch Nuremberg Rally videos? Or his... Fucking hell, the History Channel's fucked. All they show is wall-to-wall -wall Nazis 24-7. They're pretty far-right, aren't they? Someone will argue, you know, actually they're called National Socialists. Because that's what the new argument is. That Nazis were actually socialists. Therefore, liberals. I've always thought... Them Nazis, very liberal. Very, very liberal people. Because that's what liberals do. So yeah, 15 years in prison for repeatedly watching media online. Add to that Germany's threat to fucking fine everyone $50 million every time something isn't removed within 24 hours that they deem to be offensive. The internet is under attack. The um, FCC... The US government got behind their guy in the FCC again, especially while well, the Vegas thing was going on. Give him a bit more power. Because he's going to fuck the internet hard. He's just dry. He's going to put it in dry and bum us all by killing net neutrality. And people like Alex Jones have helped by turning net neutrality into some kind of communist Obama ploy. Which, again, makes no fucking sense. But people only read the fucking headlines now. People read the headlines, make a judgment based on a fucking headline, and that's it. That'll, that'll do. If Alex tells me net neutrality's bad, then net neutrality's bad. But I'm a truth seeker and free thinker. You're not. You're not. Fucking ridiculous, isn't it? What is this going to do to stop terrorists, Graham? I don't know, man. Nothing. Because <clears throat> like, like, they keep leaning on this. It's yeah. all on the internet, don't they? When... It's been shown when they've studied people who have committed terrorist acts, where they're actually radicalised, the places of worship and the, the madrasas, the schools attached to, where they group together in person. It's, yeah, it's a face-to-face -face thing, of course it yeah. is. Because uh, I don't care how well-worded a tweet is. You're not going to strap a fucking bomb vest on after that, are you? I don't know, man. 140, I reckon you shall totally <laughs> bomb people, lols. Yeah, fuck it, I'm in. Yeah, it's it, it's really concerning, and the the worst part of it is, I've almost got this sort of fatigue with like, oh, something bad's happened, so we're just going to take away another thing from you know, like maybe, we, maybe this is the uh, thing though, because you know they always keep trying to tell us that the terrorists hate us for our freedoms, mm. take away our freedoms, they can't hate us anymore. Cunning plan. It's also called losing. <laughs> Plain and simple, it's fucking stupid. I mean, pan panicking over WhatsApp, that's, the, you know, that's going back to this, like, you know, you don't ban trucks if someone does, yeah. you, you, you can't ban communication. 
because some people are communicating badly. And just know. so some of the people freaking out, sorry to interrupt, by the gun control thing, I also believe that's why they shouldn't really ban bump stocks or high capacity magazines, because overwhelmingly they aren't used to murder people. They're not. They're not. It's an emotional argument. I don't believe. Why can't they have fully automatic rifles? Is it really that fucking difference giving them semi-automatic rifles with bump stocks? No. So a lot of these bands are emotive things. They want to appear like they're doing something without doing too much. Yeah, and I, I, I think one of the issues with guns, actually, it's not come up yet tonight, is the suicide rate. The, that's, that's the big, big thing, because, you know, suicide by cutting yourself or poison, very, very low effectiveness, but, you know... Guns, Hard work as well. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the biggest issue. So if you, if, if you decide to keep guns in whatever form they are, then you have to be accepting of the fact that you're going to have an insanely high suicide rate. Because of guns. But then does that where the background checks come in? If you've got mental health issues, you probably shouldn't have a gun. Because yeah. most of the people that do the mass shootings, I know it's may come as a surprise to some of you guys, tend to be quite unwell in the head. Yeah. Uh, Amazing to think of that. I don't know. I, but I, didn't I've Trump's never... government roll back the fucking rules on background checks for mental illness or something? Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, he's only a bit schizophrenic. Give them a gun. Have a gun. Maybe they should hand them out. At outreach centres and homeless shelters. There you go, have a gun. I, I think there's got to be a balance somewhere between allowing responsible gun owners to own whatever gun they want because that's in, it's protected. That's part of their culture. But also balance it against not... Or at least making it harder for people that perhaps shouldn't have them to get them legally. There's got to be a balancing That's got to be step one, hasn't it, really? I'd, I'd have thought so. Because you're never, ever going to completely eradicate... If you've got guns, uh, you, you're always going to have gun deaths. Well, there's 300 million firearms in America. 300 mil I believe it's around 300 million. Anyone that advocates removing guns from Americans is being incredibly fucking silly. It, it, they, they don't want to give them up. There's no public will to give them up, not in any huge numbers. It's an impractical job to collect them, and it doesn't make sense. I think it's too far ingrained. It's part of their world. We've got any emails there, Cherry? No. Fucking uh, hell. <laughs> Lars actually said, uh, relating to that, Lars said that uh, no one needs an AR-15, uh, and they don't need a full auto gun at all, but they do it because it's fun. What I said before. Yeah. Uh, the only reason you need to own a gun, the only reason, if you live in a country where you can have them, the only reason you need, you don't need to justify it saying you're going to take on the government if they turn tyrannical or, you know, I'm frightened and the one in a billion chance someone's going to come in my house with the express purpose of hurting me. Don't need any of that. That's all your internal shit. There should only ever be one reason. I want one. I want it. I like them. I like them. Because it is it's tremendous fun. Have you fired guns, Graham? Oh, yeah. yeah. Huge fun. Yeah, it's great, yeah. It is, it's, it's brilliant. It's a lot of fun. You know, I think if I lived in the States, I'd be tempted. I don't know. I couldn't keep them at home. But I think I'd be quite happy to go shooting regularly. Because it's fun. I get it. It's 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 exciting. Yeah. I, I, Especially I, handguns. I find them very scary. Yeah, loads of fun. Uh, Joe's just sent in. He just said, Murica. Merc, fuck yeah! <laughs> Super male vitality, America. Uh, Ian said that you've got some good points tonight, but he's got something to add. Uh, Semi-automatic guns weren't invented when the Second Amendment was written. Also, enjoy Alice Cooper. I will, thank you very much. Now, I, I know they weren't invented, many things weren't invented then, but it's there. People don't want it amended again. The will's not there to do it, so they roll with it. They roll with it, you know. There you go. Uh, if you want to get in touch, guys, please do so. It's live at triggerwarning.tv. Been a bit light on the emails. Cherry, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, on Skype, it's live at triggerwarning.tv. Or just, no, live, yeah, live at triggerwarning.tv. At Triggered TV on the Twitter and um, Trigger Warning TV on... 
I've got loads more. Got Facebook's been hammered tonight. Has it? Way. Yeah, yeah. And, and in fact, I should read out, Natalie's been writing a lot. She's done a lot of hellos and a lot of love. Uh, she said, how can we know anything? Anything for real? Uh, we do know we can't trust media. That is literally all. But guys like you and Richie Allen will not go either way on a potentially black and white situation. And rightly so. Uh, you're better off addressing questions and leaving it to the audience. Well, all you can really judge is what you've seen. I do believe people died there because I've seen the footage. I'm, uh, you know, I used to work in makeup effects. I know how these things work. I've seen a lot of fucking dead people. You know when someone's dead, you know? I've got a Skype for you, man, if you're up for it. Yeah, I'm always up for it. Hello, who's this? It's Lacey Hates People. Hello, your favorite Lacey. Person. How are you? I'm good. I was getting a little bored with all this serious talk. I thought I'd call in and say something stupid, right? Well, <laughs> that's did, what I'm good at. If, if, if that's the thing, that's absolutely fine. So it's been a serious week, hasn't it? And also, yes. Even I mean, I don't blame you for talking about everything, but yeah, that makes sense. That whole Vegas thing, that was just insanity. Even I'm not enough of a dick to laugh and joke about what happened in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, I hear you there. I, I was on the same page. I didn't mm. feel the need to say anything asinine about such a horrible subject. So what would you like to talk about, Lacey? I don't know. Um, something riveting, I'm sure. Oh, good, riveting. We like riveting. I'll have a drink while you uh, be riveting. Oh, uh, yeah, don't get too excited there. Too late. Graham's massively excited. She's oh, frozen. She's gone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's having a little joy, Gazum. No, oh, no, back. no, she's back. She's back. There Don't we go. get rid of me, Jesus. We didn't. You just you just froze. You just froze. That's all. That's it. If you want a divorce, Hayden, just tell me you want a divorce. You don't got to cut me off of Skype. I, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, well, let me tell you a stupid You do know then. that everyone's going to think you're my fucking wife now. Oh, uh, oh my, oh my. Everybody's wife on Live League. Oh all my, all my train spastics are going to get very excited right now. Oh my god. I was getting so triggered earlier. That's like my favorite phrase get triggered. It's triggered up to fuck. <laughs> yes, get triggered. Oh my god. Triggered like a boss. What can I say? <laughs> um. Oh my Sorry, the, the Twitter's just woken up for some reason. So, uh, any particular topic you'd like to engage on, or is it just a hell? Yeah, I want to tell you a feminist joke. Okay, a feminist joke. Okay, why don't feminists go to the gym? I don't know. Why don't because feminists it's named go? after a man. Boom! <laughs> we need a drum roll, Graham. Great. We need a bada bum tish. We'll sort that out for next week, yeah? <laughs> I say that, I'll sort it out for next week. There you go, it's named after a man. Named which is silly man. because the reason they don't go to the gym is they're stuck in a nice kitchen making a delicious sandwich for their yeah, man. Yeah, there you go. Which That's is, right. They, just, they feel so out of place outside of their kitchen there. Exactly, exactly. That's all they are. They're just angry. Feminists are just angry women because they haven't yet met a man who will put them in the kitchen. They're not putting them somewhere, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if they had more of that in their life, they wouldn't be such bitches, right? I mean, feminists are terrible people. I'm just going to put that out there. Lacey knows. Lacey knows. So anyone that's on Twitter being mithered by a hairy-lipped feminist, tell her she needs to go get some cock. Sort of right <laughs> yes, out. Yes, there you go. That's right. When you were talking about big sausages earlier, I was like, oh, my God, that's... I can totally relate with that subject. That's what they I need. Love big sausages. Big veiny man sausage. Or maybe not big, eh, guys? Maybe just normal. <laughs> average. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I don't I don't got no use for something this big. I mean, like, I feel so bad for guys that have little sausages. I mean I mean, I get can you fix that? Is there a surgery for that? I don't know. <laughs> is there just, anybody? Let me. Like I'm. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's right. That's right. That, that's what I said. Well, Lacey, thank you so much for calling in and talking to us about your fondness for big sausages. I know, right? 
okay. Well, thank you for letting me talk about it. It hey. gets me so triggered. Oh. My pleasure, and I'm sure you. <laughs> I'm sure it's for the great enjoyment of many of our people in there. Speak to you hopefully next week, Lacey. Well, all right then, Captain. Bye. <laughs> bye, bye. There you go. Lacey hates people, likes big sausages. So all you guys with little sausages. And we're not talking about your EP nose here that are all like, doubtless massive, massive on the internet. I don't understand. <laughs> Natalie's specifically taking the time to say that I'm not massive. Specifically, Graham's not that massive. <laughs> winky. Why, why me? Natalie, <laughs> Natalie, I've seen him in his tight shorts. <laughs> I've sat next to him in his tight shorts. I wasn't even in that conversation. She's like, oh no, I'm going to take the time to just say that Graham's got a small dick now. But like, it's why? like a baby's arm holding an orange. <laughs> um, Alex, our media guy, has said, uh, don't forget to talk about the revelations that former Prime Minister Ted Heath may or may not have been a cyclist. Yes, it's come out that the police would indeed investigate former Prime Minister Ted Heath for child sex abuse uh, crimes if he were still alive. I'm not sure where that's going with that, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to see where that develops. Greg says, how did we replace Wingman John with these southern monkeys? Well, he broke his back, and uh, they're not even southern. And why is he put... Why is he fucking... Included Breitbart News in that comment. <laughs> Fucking Breitbart News. I don't think we know them. I don't think they follow us. Surprisingly. I've been ever so nice about Mr. Bannon as well. I've been lovely. Have we got any emails? Um, we've got one about foreign food. Oh. Uh, Greek pepper and gyros is delicious too. Yeah, gyros. Gyros. That's a, that's a gyros. I thought it was butty, innit? It's a doner kebab, basically. Fucking yeah. butty. I thought it was chicken. Um, but that's just what they call kebab, isn't yeah, it? It's just a kebab. Ooh, Nothing wrong with a kebab, especially after a couple of pints. Um, it soaks up the alcohol. Uh, Nick's, uh, Nick's wrote quite a few really good uh, things. I'm sure you're reading later on Facebook. Uh, this was to do with the WhatsApp. The waging a government-led war on encryption is to seek to annihilate all e-commerce. Talk about self-destructive, ludicrous thinking. Uh, that's all online transactions gone. Welcome to the Stone Age. Online banking will be a huge amount of fun. Speaking of the EU, which we weren't. Uh, we've got more calls as well. Well, let's take the calls in a minute because we're near the end of the show and I want to talk about the EU. Roll that shit. There we go. That should tell you exactly our opinion on the EU. Um, <coughs> surprise, surprise. The EU were being assholes. Uh, the Catalans were beaten for daring to vote for their own independence. No longer will the Catalan people allow their little autonomous region to support the rest of the failed state that is Spain. They want to go it on their own and despite massive opposition from the Spanish authorities which we covered last week and a bollocking off the king. I didn't even know Spain still had a king. I thought they lost him when we won the war. Um, it looks like they might be going on their own. So the EU has waded in and uh, let's have a look. They've said that yes Spain acted with overzealous malice and a heavy-handed attitude not seen since the days of Franco and that any nation seeking independence should be nurtured rather than demonised. I made that up. They didn't say that at all. No, no. They didn't say that at all. What they said was, if you move away from Spain, we're kicking you out of the European Union. Fuck off. They're, they're pressuring them to fuck. Catalonia. People of Catalan. If you want to be independent, go be independent. You will be a wealthy nation considering your size. Fall on the WTO rules. They're not as bad as people make out. They have to offer you a fair deal under those rules. And you will not be under the tyrannical yoke of the like of Junkers and Donald Tusk, we have to call him. He's fucking Tusk. I hate that on the news. Donald Tusk. Tusk. And Merkel and Macron and all the others. Fuck them. Go your own way. You don't have to prop Spain up anymore. 
and the EU apply more pressure when they didn't even speak out strongly against the fact that Spain basically sent the fucking troops in so that you couldn't even voice your opinion on independence. British Brexit might be looking shaky, might not be looking the best, but I, I kind of, I have a feeling we might just get there. I hope we fucking do, because we can still be good partners with our European friends. Why not? But not a part of that fucking thing. There is going to be a super state. It is going to have a centralised government, because Junkers has spelled that out. It can't go any other way. It's the only way it'll work. The redistribution of wealth to the poorer nations hasn't worked at all. Not in the least. Greece is still fucking dying and being given loan after loan after loan with people saying, hey, look, it's making it better. Till the loans come due and they can't pay. Then they lose some more. Whatever assets they've got left, the EU will fucking scrape off them and Germany will make another two or three billion off the Greek people's fucking misery. Catalonia, get the fuck out. Don't have this long, protracted, terrible fucking journey we're having where we're pretending that we're, we're negotiating with the EU. We're not. Why would the EU negotiate? They're going to tell us what they fucking want and it's, that's an end of it. Drop out, get on WTO rules, make your own fucking way. Team up with Iceland, you know, get, a, get a good trading partnership going, you'll be fine. But those bastards, you're not walking away from the EU. Don't listen to them. The EU walked away from you when you said we want to have a voice and they basically turned a blind eye to you having that voice fucking beaten out of you. Fucking have that. Graham disagrees. He loves Junkers. You fucking far-right Nazi you bastard. I'm putting the headphones on here. There's not even a call There's, now, is there? There was constant calls. Uh, there was constant calls. They've all stopped now. Phone yeah. someone back. We've yeah. only got... We, we're actually... We're over time, but phone someone back. Uh, pick and choose, pick and choose. Uh, there we go. Come on, so you got it. Yeah. yeah. On it. That's a really good picture of Hitler, by the way. Mm. Um, isn't it? Hello. Hello, you sensitive little flower. Oh, it's my favourite thick Geordie. Hello, son, you all right? Yeah, did you, did you understand now why I asked that you question? You know only too well I've got the fucking right as the, the fucking argument. There's the relation to the Second Amendment and what that means to people. Or did you do what you normally do, which is be a Republican bootlicker and ass kisser and did oh, you just, did you just spread I did, I did disagree with fucking Hayden did you did you just NRA bootlicker. did you just spread the donald's cheeks and just just you get the tip of your tongue in snowflake. there snowflake oh, i asked a question you fucking bellend and You're you snowflake. you leapt to the defense yes. i can't That's hear you you leapt to you the know. defense yes. of people that weren't being challenged do you know why because you're a fucking reactive snowflake Oh, I'm you reactive. are. You oh, are. Bart silences. Like Whoa. Pavlov's fucking dogs. Like Pavlov's dogs. You, I go like that. <laughs> Ding. A load of Americans and happy dog. The happy dog. The Americans don't want you. You're a Geordie. You're one of us. Yeah, but the, the Americans have some self-respect. I'm, ha I'm honest to make you really angry. Last have night. some self-respect. You're English. I've, I've got I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of you. You're asking stupid questions on the internet. About fucking, will it affect, will it infringe on your Second Amendment? Of course it will. It's gun control. Okay. Ha, ha, no, 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 no. It's not gun control. Well, it's, sorry, it's accessories, hmm. isn't it? It's like control on silencers. Okay, suppressors. so, Mr. You've got it all. Tell me how the Second Amendment relates to gun accessories. Can you tell me the wording? Can you tell me the wording? You're, you're an expert. I'm wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. It's all I'm right. not an expert. I oh, know you must be. You must be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fucking, oh, ad, fucking hell. ad hominem Hayden I thought fucking more of you than this Ad hominem's an insult I've, not, I've not insulted you what's I've asked you to explain you? it but An ad hominem is an insult I've not done that I've asked you to explain to me where accessories are covered in the second amendment You know the This whole thing about background checks And mm. restrictions and mm. It wouldn't have stopped that attack No it wouldn't I never said no. it would I never said it would, but do you think it might be a good idea to keep guns out of the hands of people with mental health issues? Well, that's a very difficult area, isn't it? Because what do you class as a mental difficulty? Well, you know, are, are mental you saying, people. Are you, saying, are you saying that somebody with depression hasn't the right to self-defence in their own home? I think somebody with clinical depression 
is is not the best person to have a firearm in the house right. yes why right. because so the suicide me, rates let, shh, let me answer you ignorant fuck because the sui <laughs> because the suicide rates amongst firearm owners climb dramatically and that is just a statistic it's not a gun control yeah, fact it's a statistical fact doesn't automatically equal suicidal thoughts um, but it does increase the likelihood of that uh, by a large factor and somebody that's manic and quite happy well are they not going to be allowed a firearm somebody who never yeah but, never had an evil thought mania is often linked to depression as well it's a mental imbalance well that's bipolar isn't it yeah yeah people well, that are mentally I mean, imbalanced probably shouldn't have firearms until they have it all under control and perhaps you know what might be a better idea allow their doctor to actually sign it off but it's that whole grey area of what what actually constitutes a mental illness and how that mental illness affects the individual doesn't it no no because somebody, uh, yeah, but, yeah. somebody that suffers from clinical depression might never have had a suicidal thought they might, might never not have, uh, which is why i just said of hurting anybody they should Someone have who's manic might never have had a fucking negative but they thought. might tomorrow because they're mental yeah but anybody could do anybody could change so you're actually going to set them aside and say no you've been you've you've been treated for depression even though you've never been suicidal you're gonna have to like do so without get it you're not going to be able to protect your home. get it signed off by a medical professional Get it signed off. Like we have to do here for driving licenses, fucking old people and shit like that. Um, epilepsy. You can't so, drive if you've got epile epilepsy. Well, yeah, you, we don't let it? epileptics drive here. We're not got that, so we're not letting them have guns now. That's probably a good idea, that Graham. Graham thinks we should ban epileptics from owning guns. Well, they I could think fit. Ban epileptics. They could fit. Good point, Graham. Well made. <laughs> but no, I think a medical professional should sign it off. There you go. I just think it's well, yeah, but maybe, but it's a, it's a grey area to fucking say. But a medical mental. professional is quite good at that, aren't they? They've got they will know the patient, they will have a relationship <coughs> with them, they'll have treated them, and they can say no. There's been no evidence of any of this. I believe on the balance of probability, because you can't say for sure one way or another. On the balance of probability, it's okay. It's okay, and I think that's reasonable given this not a huge amount of people and also you cannot argue that suicide rates amongst clinically depressed are massively higher than amongst those who aren't depressed for the very reason that it's usually depressed people that fucking kill themselves and also you cannot argue and this is not a reason to take them away from everybody but you cannot argue that the suicide rates when firearms are available do climb dramatically because it gives you that impulse that isn't as easy with other methods. And it's just a fact. It's just, that's just a fact. It's not to say it should be result in nobody having it or this happening or that. This is just what it is. This is the price you pay in society for having these things. That's just the, the price. So perhaps there's ways of ensuring through via medical professionals. And it has to be someone that's had a history where you don't want people just going and paying a doctor. <laughs> fucking getting the you know like a bit like a bent sicky you don't want that but you do want people to go no I, I, this person who has had mental health issues is on balance of probability safe to have a firearm i just well i, I personally think it's it's singling out people in in a country where firearms are freely available it's a, it's a big infringement on somebody's civil liberties but it might keep them and other people alive. <sighs> it might keep people alive. It might, but you, you, you're going down the same avenue of like, well, people can run somebody over in a car. People can do whatever the what whatever it takes them mm. to do. Yeah, but we're talking about the fact that there's two options: do something or do nothing. But I don't think you can do anything about it. It's always it's always a reaction to something. You can't whatever you bring in will not bring back those fifty nine people. No, it won't. It won't at all. That's why we said earlier there's an emotional and a statistical way of looking it, at these things. It doesn't necessarily stop things like that happening. I mean, we've had gun control for a long time, haven't we? In ninety six it was, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, and well, yeah, yeah, we had that Cumbrian shooting no, in twenty ten. With a shotgun, yeah. No, not just a shotgun. Did he have a long rifle? rifle he shot, rifle. He okay. shot his lawyer. From a great distance with his two two scope rifle. Okay. He hit him about fifteen times or something on his front doorstep. Okay, so all right, I know, I remember there was Derek Bird, wasn't it? Aye. So we had Michael Ryan, 
Uh, that was the one that got with, got the semi-automatics banned. Yeah, because he went on a mental fucking rampage, didn't he? We had Michael yeah. Ryan, there was Derek Bird, and then in the middle there was a uh, Hungerford chap. And there was also one not too far from where I am in Monk Seaton. Somebody went apeshit with a shotgun in uh, 80, 79 or 80. Right, 79. So yeah. over over the, that, over like near enough 40 years, we've had four that you can think of. Oh, no, what about... Um, no, he, he only... He only didn't really kill many, did he? Um, the one that Gaza tried to give chicken to. Oh, so yeah, um, Raul Moore. That's him. <laughs> so we've not that had, was a policeman and the, and the boyfriend. I we've not had many. However, we have a very different culture to the US. So what I can't do is take what happens here and apply that over there. It doesn't work like that. But I do think you've got a choice. Do fuck all and just say this is this is the cost of it. This is the cost of it. These things will happen. A huge but amount of people will die every year from firearm deaths, and we will have these mass killings. This is going to happen. Or you try something. And I don't think restricting people with severe mental health problems from owning firearms is a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. We, we, we wouldn't let them be airline pilots, would we? Would we? No. No, we wouldn't let them be airline pilots. We wouldn't let mentally ill people be bus drivers. We wouldn't. Oh, I don't know. Have you fucking seen many bus drivers? You don't go on the buses, they're, no, do you? They're I, all of fucking I mad bus drivers. Of course I don't go on fucking buses. I'm not, I'm not fucking... They're all fucking mental bus drivers. But they're not really, if you know what I mean. They're just grumpy old bastards. But we don't let people with severe mental health issues be bus drivers. We don't let them be truck drivers. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> we, don't let, we don't let them be airline pilots. But we'll let them have guns because it probably won't change anything. I just think there's far too many people. I mean, that yeah, call up before the, the American lad with these with these automatic rifles. It's a very good point. It's, it's handguns that cause more more problems in America. I've not I've not made but, any distinction. Yeah, but any country that gives up its guns has, and all of them have, a massive spike in gun crime. When you take the hands the guns out the hands of the the law abiding people, and all it's only them. the criminals who you, who are not going to stop getting guns. All of the have countries. Free reign. All of the countries that have gun bans have massive spikes in gun crime. Yeah. We don't, we don't have a lot of gun crime, though, do we? We had a massive spike after the after ninety six. That's do what actually got our armed response vehicles to come do out. Know, do you know in Manchester? We didn't have an armed response unit. We didn't have armed response massive, units. Yeah, like, hang oh, on. No. But massive spike. We have to remember what we class as a firearm offence in this country. Also in Manchester, do you know that they they reduced gun crime by over seventy percent in one evening by arresting eight people? Yeah. And they used to call Manchester Gunchester. But in. After '96, we did have a lot more gun crime in okay. this country. But Australia the, had the same. The, the gun crime thing. that we had, though, I'll bring the stats up for this. Was it predominantly criminal versus law-abiding citizen, or was it mostly criminal on criminal violence? It was armed robberies. It was criminal on criminal violence, and it was criminal on law-abiding citizen so, violence. It was. It was a big increase. The the actual figures it took. I seem to remember last time I read them. It took six years. For the figures to get okay, down so we had a spike. Barn level. We had a spike. Six years. We had a spike. Yeah. Australia H had a spike. It, and and then what happened? I mean that post that Andy put. I did it. And then what happened? That post. What? Well, well I haven't read the figures on Australia. I don't know if they've gone down. Of but course they have. They did go dramatically. Up after the Australian shooting was gun ownership in Australia. Mm. More people owned guns after that shooting. Of course they did, because everyone with guns knew they were going to get banned and bought as many as they fucking could. No, no, no. That's still happens in the States. A lot, a lot more people bought guns for the first time, and one of the main reasons the put down was personal protection due to a feeling of lack of safety in the country to the rise in gun violence. And the amazing thing is that now they have much lower levels of gun violence and less people owning guns. No, no, they've got more people owning guns, Hayden. They've just got to. Do, they ban the. They ban the automatic and semi-automatic. Oh, that, that's what people, worked for them then. A lot more people have got shotguns, handguns, and bolt-action rifles. Bolt-action. So you could argue hell. that that is what's keeping the gun crime down. There's more armed, decent people. Well, out there. Okay, so there we go. What we'll do, we'll uh, even though our gun crime is ferociously low in the UK, and it is, firearm offences include pointing a fucking stick at somebody in this country. 
um, or an airsoft gun or something. That's a firearms offence. We'll get rid of all the automatic and semi-automatic and let everyone have bolt-action rifles, yeah? It's just about that like that anyway. So you can't have a semi-automatic in this country. So there, it's all worked out. Dude, we got to go. We're running over. Cheers. Right, no, we, can, we can carry this on on Sunday if you want. Cheers, fella. That was happy, dog. Take care, fella. I was happy, dog. We're running late. You wanted my attention there, Graham. We're running really fucking late. Yeah, no, it was nothing that urgent. It was just to do with the, the whole thing about cars. You know, you have to get a license to get a car, so you have to prove that you're capable. And then if you consistently show yourself to be dangerous, you lose the right to have that yeah. car. So why... But the argument will then be, well, criminals will still drive. But I, I just don't understand this civil liberties thing. It's like, well, it's you, you don't, you, you're don't you not born with a right to drive. You still have to prove that you're... The safe. only argument, and it. it's a bullshit argument, is, well, the criminals will still be criminals. Well, that's a good reason, then. Most mm. of you will never encounter an armed criminal in your fucking lives. It's like people telling me we should be armed here because of terror attacks. I don't feel the need to own a gun. I don't feel any desire to own a gun. And chances are, for all your John Wayne fucking fantasies, if it happens, your gun won't protect you either. But if it makes you feel safer, fill your boots. It's nothing to do with me. But you hear the same sort of arguments time and time again. It's safer with guns. It's better with this. Glossed over, I noticed the suicide rates because it's a very uncomfortable statistic for people to handle because it's just there. It's not massaged. It's just there. Um, I just think maybe it's reasonable to not let people with serious mental health issues have guns. And the funny thing is people that say that's wrong, like Happy Dog, they say it's wrong because we're singling them out. If I said we shouldn't let Muslims fly in planes... He'd go, yeah, fair enough. But what are the odds of dying in a fucking terrorist plane crash? Even smaller than getting fucking shot by one. So there you go. There's arguments to be said. There's arguments to go around. It's just worth a chat. Um, hopefully we'll be talking about something a lot lighter um, next time. And uh, we'll have some fun. We'll be back next Thursday with Trigger Warning TV and I'll try and get something sorted out a bit nastier for the backdrop as well I'm back on Sunday on FabRadioInternational.com with Trigger Warning Radio get in touch through the week and check out TriggerWarning.tv the website and of course you can also catch up with us on the marvellous, lovely godlike, lively dot com which is as good as it gets thank you very much to everyone in Troll Central that's really fantastic, great to see you all there uh, if you've commented on uh, social media, apparently it's been quite busy. I'll get through as many as I can later on, I do promise. Graham, Jerry, thank you so much, guys. You're all right, man. You're all right. Always a pleasure. You can't beat a bit of gun chat. Gets people very excited. Next week, I'll explain why people who hunt are actually spastics that suck cock. And... Uh, <laughs> That gets them all. That got me blocked by several people on Twitter. They don't like that because they like to feel a connection with their food. Me too, in my mouth. I see, you know, well, it's hypocritical. You get other people to kill yours. Yeah, thick people like you to kill the animals for my consumption. I don't build my own fucking cars either. Do you know why? Don't have to. Buy them. It's the way it works. Guys, thanks so much. Remember, Trigger Warning Radio on Sunday on FabRadioInternational.com. We're back here next week. Check out Trigger Warning TV. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.